Here's the last example in this section on linear programming. This is a very simplified version of the problem facing the planers of the Berlin airlift. Here we're just going to use two variables, but really there were many, many more. Our goal is to maximize the weekly cargo capacity of American and British planes flying into Berlin. We're told that the cargo capacity of an American plane is 30,000 cubic feet, and the cargo capacity of a British plane is 20,000 cubic feet. However, there are only enough runways to allow 56 flights per week, so we're starting to think in terms of constraints, plus the total cost per week is limited to 300,000, and we're told what each flight cost. Finally, only 512 crew members are available. Each American flight requires 16 crew members, and each British flight requires 8 crew members. How many American and British planes should be used in order to maximize the cargo capacity? Whenever you see a linear programming problem, you need to break down this, pro this uh, statement into the objective function, the variables, and the constraints. So first of all, we notice the last sentence asks us to maximize the cargo capacity. So we know that's going to be our objective function. So that everything to do with the cargo capacity will be used to find the objective function. For instance, when we're told that the cargo capacity of an American plane is 30,000, cubic feet, and so on, this will relate to the objective function. And again, we're told that we're trying to maximize part of capacity here at the beginning. So that all has to do with the objective function. Then, when we're told there are only enough runways, and the cost per week is limited to, and only 512 crew members are available, those all sound like constraints. So all those are going to be constraints. And then, we're asked how many American planes and how many British planes should be used. So the thing that we can control, or the thing we need to decide on, is how many American planes to use and how many British planes to use. So those will be our variables. So it's always useful to go through this problem statement and make sure that, um, that you've divvied it up into the variables, the objective function, and the constraints. That makes these first three steps a lot easier. Now when we're asked to identify the variables, well we know that we're at trying to decide how many American planes to use and how many British planes to use, so we call those X and Y. Again, if I called X the number of British planes and Y the number of American, that would be perfectly fine as long as I was consistent throughout the rest of the problem. So it doesn't matter which one is X and which one is Y at the very beginning. Now, to find the objective function, again, we're trying to maximize cargo, so cargo is our objective function. The total cargo is the cargo carried by American planes plus the cargo carried by British planes. And since each American plane can carry 30,000 cubic feet, the total that American planes can carry is that 30,000 times the number of American planes there are. And similarly for the British planes. So that's our objective function. And again, we set that aside until near the end of the problem after we've dealt with the constraints. For the constraints, we have the limitations that there are only 56 total flights the total cost can't exceed 30,000, and we only have 512 crew members available. So we've got to go through one by one and think about how to define these constraints in terms of X and Y. If we only have 56 total flights to work with, that means the number of American flights plus the number of British flights has to be some number less than 56. So that's what this inequality says, is that X plus Y has to be less than or equal to 56. Then if the total cost can't exceed 30,000, that means the total cost must be less than or equal to 30,000. This left hand side is the total cost, and again that's less than or equal to 300,000. And the total cost is the cost of the Americans plus the cost of the British planes. The cost of each individual plane times the number there are for each case. And then the crew members work the same way. The total crew members is the crew members used on the American planes plus the ones on the British planes. And that has to be less than or equal to 512. We only have 512 to work with, so we can use fewer than that, but we can't use any more than that. So it works just the same as the other two. Then, of course, as usual, these non-negative constraints aren't stated, but we include them because they are the only thing that makes sense. There's no way that x or y could be negative. And then we summarize the constraints this way, again color coding them so that when we graph things 
everything will uh, be clear where it came from. Once we graph the feasible region, here we have these three lines, and we've shaded the appropriate region. So again, I'm not going through the graphing problem or the shading problem, but you can review the sections on graphing and on linear inequalities if you need to brush up on that. Now we want to find the coordinates of these corner points because again the fundamental theorem tells us that these corner points are our candidates for the maximum and the minimum. So we want the maximum so it's going to be one of these five points is the optimal point. To find the corner points, well these two up here and down here we can find based on graphing using the intercepts and then this one here of course is zero zero. So really all that's left is to find the point where the green and blue lines intersect and the point where the green and red lines intersect. And we do that by solving those systems of equations. So that's summarized here. We don't go through the process of solving them, but again you can review solving systems of equations if you need to. The solutions are 20, 24, and 551. So those are the two points. Summarizing, we have these five corner points. And finally, we evaluate the objective function of the corners. So each combination of x and y is evaluated, and we find the one that has the maximum, the highest cargo capacity. So that's if five American planes are used and 51 British planes are used. Notice we're using a total of 56 flights, which was our constraint, and we're meeting all the other constraints as well. And our maximum cargo capacity is 1.17 million uh, cubic feet per week, and that's our conclusion. So again, that's the process of a linear programming problem. We defined the variables, we constructed the objective function, and then we defined the constraints and graphed the feasible region, found the corners, and then finally evaluated the objective function at the corners to find the optimal point.